OK, well, uh, our story today is to try to address some of the issues that challenge uh, the international game, the game in general at the moment, and we have a fine body of men to do so. Sean Pollock, Shane Warne, Michael Holding and, uh, and Graham Smith. And clearly the main topic of conversation over the last week of uh, the cricketing world's life has been the issue of the ball, what you can and can't do with it. Uh, the problems, of course, the Australians face by taking it a bit too far. Um, but reverse swing is a very important part of the game. Sean Pollock, I'll start with you. My, my view happens to be that give a team a ball let them get on with it with their own hands and saliva, but don't let them use any foreign objects. But don't change the ball either. Unlucky. Once you've got it, it's your ball, unless it's clearly out of shape. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I don't know any points against that. I think that could be the way to go forward. I just think what you need to do is eliminate every single grey area that there is in with the ball tampering issue. If there's something that shouldn't happen, it shouldn't happen. End of chat. It can't be, well, maybe that's okay, or maybe it's not, or you only get a little bit of a fine for doing that, and that's more severe than the other. Make it clear. No grey areas. You're allowed to do this. As you say, give them the ball. You can use your fingers. You can use saliva. You can use sweat. You can use whatever you want to get it to shine up, but no grey areas. Define it so everyone knows where they stand. Mikey? I agree with Polly to a degree, but the thing is when you say you can use your saliva, then you have to say, you know, you can't have sweets in your mouth when you're using that saliva because the sweet then adds sugar to your saliva. And as Polly says, you've got to make it totally clear. Anything that is natural to your body, saliva, your fingernail, whatever you want to do, fine. But if you're going to start bringing in foreign objects, then you're crossing the line and you have to cut that out. I'm not too sure the ICC will agree with that, but I think that is at least a step better than what they have at the moment. Seems as if the ICC have got to create parameters, haven't they? And as Polly says, stick to them. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's far too many grey areas and inconsistencies in our game, and that's what causes an immense amount of frustration. I think the other thing that uh, is causing this problem is, is the Kookaburra ball. It's just not swinging. It's not playing a part in the game. Uh, and, uh, you know, in, in the game of cricket we have at the moment, we don't have, you know, mystery spinners anymore, the ball doosters. We don't have the likes of Shane Warne around in the game. You know, fast bowling is probably not at its best, you know, outside this series uh, through a consistent period. The ball's not swinging. So players are starting to look at methods to, to compete. And, you know, I think uh, I tend to agree with Mikey and Sean. You know, I, I, I agree. You give the guys the ball, use any part of your body, but no outside uh, yeah, influences. That. Yeah, I, I think it's very hard to still police that because if someone puts a sweet in their pocket or you know, do you get caught with a lolly or chewing gum or, you know, sunscreen well, on the sweat? Yeah, that's it's a, a fine. It's Once it's got a sweet or it's bustling on the eyebrows, that's a fine on your own. Yeah, it's just hard to police that. You know, I agree with what the boys are saying, but it's just hard to police that. My question is, with technology these days that we've seen with the bats and everything else with the technology, why has nothing happened to the ball? Why can't we get a better ball? Uh, the ball hasn't been changed since the history of the game. Uh, and we've got the similar ball for such a long period of time. All we want to see is a contest between bat and ball. So you go back to the con pitch conditions and you go back to if the ball did something from the start. So, what, you know, the best ball I see and that everyone uses is the juke ball. So like Smitty said, one ball would be what is the best ball around and let's use that. And can we weight one side of the ball? Now we're getting too scientific about it, but can we weight one side of the ball like the old tape tennis ball that swings? Because as soon as we get a ball that does something, it's a great contest. But the kookaburra ball, there's just not enough balls swinging with the new ball. And then it doesn't go reverse, it goes out of shape. So people are trying to do different things to make the stain a contest because of the flat pitches. You'd be having to go with a juke ball, guys? Yeah, I think, we, I think we tried the juke here before we went to 99 World Cup and it sort of got out of shape on our harder surfaces, so they'd have to do some experiment to, to see if it, it lasts. But I think also the mindset needs to change a little bit about any time we have a pink ball test match, everyone says, oh, this ball's going around corners, this has become out of control. Um, in the old days, you used to have uncovered surfaces, you rock up, it'd be flat, the wicket would get soft, all of a sudden there would overnight rain and the ball would spit and, you know, Underwood would pick up eight for spit. Um, so that part is part and parcel of the game. It's allowed to move. I think also the mindset of what a good pitch is and it must be good for batting. I think that must also be put a into the equation. A good pitch is not a flat pitch, 500 no. plays 500. So, that's not a good pitch. Yeah, so that's not exciting cricket anymore. You know, you want co co competition between bat and ball. This summer in South Africa, we've seen that, and it's been exciting test yeah. cricket. And mm -hmm. a ball that does something is enjoyable. I mean, if yep. you think of that, your Ashes test over yep. Boxing Day, that was just a flat pudding, yep. and that wasn't exciting right. for anyone. Okay, so so we want a better ball. 
and we want clearer guidelines from the Absolutely. ICC. They're the two and, and heavy, and very important And punishment straight away, that, yeah. not Immediate. let it go. If, if something happens to whatever team, if someone steps out of line with it, Vaseline, mints, whatever, you're done. And okay. this immediate. is the, immediate, so no one else does it. OK, let's move on. Test cricket, threatened by T20. Uh, it seems to be the general view out there, yet we've seen fantastic test cricket throughout this tour. And in fact, a lot of test cricket around the world is, is having exciting finishing finishes, running the distance. What do we think about four days? What do we think about day-night test cricket? What do we think in general? Um, let's start with you, Graham. You want to start with Mikey? OK. <laughs> we like starting with Mikey. Mikey loves 2020 cricket. <laughs> no, nah, but we're not talking about 2020 <laughs> cricket. Yeah, 2020. Yeah, you, you did answer this Mark competition. Is, Mark is leaving for that discussion. <laughs> My problem with test cricket is that there are too many test matches that have no meaning whatsoever. People are just organizing test matches between two countries. No significance, no meaning, doesn't lead to anything. And that is my problem with test cricket. What I would like to see them do with test cricket is have less test cricket, more meaningful test cricket, meaning two divisions. And you have a promotion and demotion system. I mooted that from 2010. I know it will never happen because there are certain countries that will never, ever stand going down into second division, whether their team is good or not. But if you are interested in cricket, if the ICC are interested in development of cricket and for cricket, test cricket that is, to get back the prominence that it once had, you have to have meaningful test cricket. Do you think the forthcoming World Test Championship helps no. that situation? No. No? I, discussed, I spoke about that on commentary earlier on. Over whatever period of time you're going to have these teams competing to, towards that final, so at some point you're going to have half the entire world who know they cannot get to that final. What do they do after that? Play me more meaningless test cricket. What's the point in that? Right. You've got to have throughout the entire season, whatever period of time you, you say you're going to qualify for Division and 1 and Division 2, Every team is fighting to either go up or to prevent themselves from going right, down. Very good. Just like county cricket, Mark. You know, when I played county cricket for Derbyshire, halfway through the season, I wasn't like Hampshire that was competing for all the, two, the different <laughs> well, competitions. No. Sometimes. Halfway through the season, more times than not, Derbyshire had absolutely no chance of getting any silverware. The rest of the season became boring, became tiresome, and you're just waiting for the season right. to end. Okay. When you now have a promotion and demotion system in county cricket, almost every game, at some point, perhaps the last two games, you know you cannot get promoted or you, you definitely will get demoted. So, yes, but not halfway through the season. OK, Graham? Well, I, I agree with Mikey. I was on commentary with him at the time we debated uh, all of this. I, I like the two division stuff. Uh, I think that the biggest thing is creating context in our, in our cricket. I mean, these series where there's seven ODIs, it's, just, it's, it's pointless for me. I think contest is the most important thing. When there is that, when two good teams play against each other, everyone wants to watch no matter what yep. the format. And, and then test cricket becomes prominent again. So I think we've got to get our standards up, get more teams competing at a higher level, um, and, and then people will watch. Morning. Yeah. Oh. I think we all love Test cricket and because we know it's the hardest form of the game. Over five days, the best side will always win. In the other forms of the game, not necessarily the best side will always win. But in Test cricket, the best side will always win. I think the battle between bat and ball in Test match cricket is what we all love. But I'm happy to be wrong. Are we forcing something down the, the public's throat that they don't want with Test cricket? Do they want 2020 cricket? Do they want one day international cricket? Unfortunately, society, everyone's in a hurry. Everyone's got something to see. They want things instantly. Now, we have to move with the times too. But I, I, think, I don't think we push test cricket enough. I don't think the ICC and that push test cricket enough have test matches that are context enough. If we re-educate the public about why test cricket is the best form of the game and why it's so hard to play and why it's so good, we advertise it, we promote the games in it, we promote the AB de Villiers, the Viverac Coleys, these guys that are great for the game, the Mitchell Starks, the Rabadas, these guys. And when I look around advertising for cricket, it's the Big Bash, it's the IPL, it's the Ram Slam, it's all the 2020 competitions. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible it's promotion. It's all the advertising. Yeah, yeah. There's I not agree. much advertising for test match cricket. Uh, so let's re-engage the public about why test cricket is so special. Rank campaigns about why it's so special. The history of it. Have World Series cricket. Have all those things. Documentaries. We show all that all the time. And ex-players say why test cricket is so okay. special. And the last point is we have to make sure that the modern day player and the current day player still wants to play test cricket. So if they 
want to play test cricket and they value test cricket and they want to test themselves against the best. We've got to hope they want to do that and the rest looks after itself. So they've got to be paid as well as they would be if exactly they played right. in 2020 cricket. Four day test cricket, interesting? Yeah, I've been in a lot of discussions about that. I mean, test cricket, I know we know it as five day cricket, but way back in the day, it wasn't only played over five days. There were different periods that it was played over. Pink ball matches to get people through. I also think from my side, I think there might be some teams in five, ten years time, we might only have six teams playing test cricket. Is that a problem? I'm actually not so sure if it is a problem. As long as the, the competition between those teams and the actual cricket that has been produced as the product is fantastic. Um, you know, if some teams, it costs them a lot of money to host test matches. They actually lose money on test match cricket rather than making money on it. And for the boards, a lot of them don't want to have those, those matches and a lot of the kids don't want to play. So if we've got six teams who were really in and committed to test cricket playing and it's competitive, then you could have a test championship where each other plays each other. So. I don't know if the idea to make Afghanistan um, and Ireland play test cricket is all that clever an idea with regards to making more teams play. It's more teams playing doesn't mean test cricket's going to be better or it's going to grow. I think the context on the, the actual cricket that's produced in those test matches is more important. A mm, couple of divisions promote it a whole lot better, make it important, re-engage with the people and experiment. Try it over four days and keep having a crack at day-night games, though I do think that they have to be played in very dry climates. Can 50-over cricket survive or is the 2020 uh, gold rush too threatening? Well, originally I thought uh, one-day cricket would, would, would fade away. I thought it would be Test cricket and, and T20 cricket. But if you talk to the broadcasters, the guys who advertise in the game and, and the television rights, uh, apparently one-day cricket is, is really relevant and, 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 and great for, for those, those things. So, you know, it seems to be surviving at the moment. I think if they create context across every format, I think there's no reason why all three formats can't survive in, in, in my mind. I just think, for me, I would like to see 2020 cricket go back to just a domestic game. I think, you know, keep it at Big Bash, IPL, uh, whatever, the, the Nat Twist Blast, the Ram Slam, and play international cricket as Test cricket and One Day cricket. Yes, you can have a World Cup every couple of years for the 2020 format, but for me, international T20 cricket lacks context. It's always either just a couple of games thrown in the start or the end of the series. Um, and a lot of teams are using it to blood youngsters. Um, so I'd like to see 2020 cricket remain just a, dom a domestic format. I know you feel pretty strongly about this. About 2020. You'd love 2020 and you're not sure. I think, I think you're not sure 50 over cricket will exist. Yeah, I, I, 50 over cricket for me, I know, works for the broadcasters and stuff. But to me, the rules, we're always trying to, to manipulate the rules because it's not that exciting to watch 50 over cricket. So for me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any rules in 50 over cricket. I would actually have no rules. I, and I'd actually like to improve a couple of things. As I say, let me ring rules in the game as in field restrictions and things like that. I'd like to add a couple of things to one day cricket. And med bowlers bowl as many overs bowlers as they like. Bowlers can bowl as many overs so as they like. So Warren and McGrath can bowl 25 from each end. If they want to. No, that's good. I agree. And I think the captains yeah. with the field restrictions, no field restrictions. If you want to put everyone on the fence, let the, the boring captains that have got no idea, let them do it. The attacking captains will win the games. Holding Roberts, Garner, Marshall. They can, both, they, they can they bowl can, 12 each, can't exactly they? Exactly right. Cause chaos. Don't have restrictions on the bowlers because you want to see... It's the same in 2020. I agree with Graham about domestic game. Don't agree with it in international cricket. I would have it like an Olympics. Every four years you have a World Cup for 2020 cricket. But in that, they should have four bowlers allowed to bowl five overs rather than five can bowl four, a maximum of four. I think you want to see the best bowlers facing the best batsmen. What do you think of that idea? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. There's no problem. With it. Even if they can't bowl as many as they want, give them more over, so you only have to use three or four bowlers if you've got the best. You know, a problem with fit no fielding restrictions is that when you're threatened, you'll put everybody on the boundary. That's right. So, but you'll get booed, and the clever <laughs> batsmen will get twos. It'll be ridiculous. <laughs> well, it, well, well, they well, did it. Lose. England did it, did, did, didn't they? And it yeah, caused chaos, in, didn't in it? It ruined the game. Yeah, I think in Australia. Yeah. It'll be chaos. But the difference now with 1980 to 01, why you won't get batsmen getting tools. They bring in the field. The yeah. fields are a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. So when you have everyone on the boundary, you're still only going to get singles yeah, on, those, on those fields that they have. I just think we can't I, eliminate 50 over cricket. There's I no mean, ways yeah. it can because, first of all, your clubs, your schools, all the other people, the only longer format of the game they get is 50 overs. So if you're going to only have T20 cricket, how can you play T20 cricket and then be picked to play in a test match? It doesn't make sense. And we've got to be producing that 50 over cricket to show the others in the clubs, in the varsities, in the uh, schools, 
that that's how 50 over cricket. It's the same as tennis. You couldn't have tennis as one set or five sets. You've got to have that three set game in between as well. You've got to hold Mikey off this far, but now Mikey, all <laughs> no, yours. I'll, I'll give you one reason why you won't get rid of 50 over cricket. The ICC make a lot of money from their World Cups, 50 over World Cups. If you get rid of the 50 over game, they'll only have 20, 20 over tournaments. They ain't going to make a lot of money from that. And the ICC want to make money. It's mm -hmm. all about the almighty dollar, Mark. You know that. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, uh, it's true. <laughs> I love 50 over cricket. I've got to tell you, a good I, game I, of 50 I still over think it's the best great. game and uh, the best game of the two. Um, I know you're not keen, but I, what do you think of Graham's idea that 2020 cricket should only be played at I've domestic that, league level? I've said that for many, many years. Why have international 2020 cricket? You know, I'm totally against 2020 cricket anyway, because I think it affects the longer form of the game and it affects the poorer countries. That is why Western does bring in new audiences. I'm not too worried about bringing in new audiences because those new audiences don't then go and watch test cricket. You don't find people going to fast food restaurants and then going to, to the great restaurants after that. They stick with the fast food. And that is what is happening with 2020. I've made the argument with a lot of broadcasters. I say to them, have you seen people that have been attracted by the 2020 game then going to test matches and they have to concede? No. So it's not really bringing in new audiences to cricket. It's bringing in new audiences, audiences to 2020. No, but that is a start, isn't it? That's better than them not watching cricket at all. But what, what you found, though, Mark, is that those who were doing who were watching 50 over cricket when 50 was started, that were attracted by 50 over cricket. As soon as they got attracted to 50 over cricket, they said, oh, this cricket thing ain't so bad. And they would then start to watch test cricket as well. Those who are attracted primarily to 20 over cricket, they do not then go and watch test matches. Yet. Yet. It's been going on a very long time. Did you two have a bad thing, breakfast together thing, this morning? <laughs> no, no, I'm just playing devil's advocate. The only thing about 2020 cricket, there's a lot more kids that come to 2020, a lot more families have a day out to 2020 cricket, which is good. And now I think we go back to the form about re-educating the public about test match cricket. Yes, they can go to the families, the kids can have a day out at 2020, but let's try and get them into test cricket. Um, what's your name? Yeah. Uh, my name is Demi. This is you, live TV. Do you watch, do you watch uh, 20 over cricket, 50 over cricket, or do you always come to the tests? Um, I watch all. You watch my all, and which is your favourite? I'm a big fan of cricket. Um, I don't mind. Okay. I'd say probably uh, the one you were just talking about, if, 50 if, over cricket. If you're under the age of 14, put your hand up if you like test match cricket. You are not under the age of 14, my friend. <laughs> I act like one I'm four, <laughs> not four zero. Uh, I, I, I act like I'm under 14. <laughs> okay. If you're under the age of 14 or over the age of 35, sir, um, if you're under the age of 14, put your hands up if you like 20 over cricket. Okay, interesting. So more hands go up for test match cricket on a day of test match cricket. Okay, so to sum up, we want a context, context and maybe two divisions. We believe that 20 over cricket should be domestic, not international. Mm -hmm. yep. We believe that 50 over cricket could be improved by holding back on the restrictions and we believe that test match cricket should be far better promoted. Yep. I think that sums Pretty up our com conversation. Um, let's go to um, behaviour on the field, um, sledging, what's right and wrong, banter, um, how we approach the manners of the game. Uh, Mikey. I've been discussing this a lot on not discussing because there are no one really talking with me about it on, on commentary. <laughs> but. I have mooted the point about having a yellow card, two yellow card and a red card with the umpires. Your first offence, which is sledging, I'm not talking about no just banter where people pass sarcastic remarks. I have absolutely no problems with that. You may walk past a batsman and to your teammate, you say, you know, last year he was a good player. Look at him scratching around now. <laughs> I have no problem with that. But when you're going to look at That's somebody bad, and Mark. tell them about their heritage and their parents yeah. and their wife and their mother and that yellow card immediately. Only if you do yellow. that if you do that twice, red card. Yeah, everybody makes a mistake, Mark. I have no problem with someone making a mistake once. Yeah. Everyone deserves a second chance. Yellow card the first time you offend, red card the second time, you're off the field, your team is plays with you're, ten. You're off for the field for the day or the match? The match, your team plays with ten. And yeah, you do not say, get you can't replace him, can No, you, you can't replace him. You don't get a substitute field or anything either. You play with ten. And you'll see how quickly that rubbish stops. Can't oh. argue with Mikey on that. Okay, very uh, good I just idea. don't want to lose the contest between 
Bolo and Dada. I think people love that contest. Um, mm. Control it, be respectful, uh, understand the boundaries. Um, and I think also strong umpiring and match referees. I, I, I can't argue with Mikey's point I saw of view. one in the World Cup. Wahab Wright Riaz in Australia, the World Cup. Wahab Riaz and Shane, Shane Watson Watt. went what? at each other and they both got punished for it. Yeah. And actually, I didn't think they'd push the That was an Adelaide, I reckon. He was yes, bowling some right. bumpers to Shane Watson. Yeah, look, I love a contest. And I, I remember Alan Border, our fellow commentator, when I first started, and he said, uh, you know, if you want to, if you feel like... That we talk about on commentary a lot about finding a way to get into a game because some days the ball's just not coming out right. I remember sitting talking to Alan Border about it and he said, well, mate, just pick a fight with a batsman. Not a fist fight, but he said, <laughs> get into a competition with him. And you might just walk past the batsman and say, what are you looking at? Nothing, but suddenly it's you and him then. It's a battle between bat and ball, and it's a contest between you two. And that sometimes just switches you on a little bit more. So, like Mikey said, you know, whether you used to be a good player or whatever the line is, a bit of banter, a bit of fun. And generally those lines where you laugh, where it brings a bit of a laugh, is a good one. Where it gets too personal, that, 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 that's out. Good and I lot, like Mikey's put, idea. Put a lot of pressure on umpires, this. The red and well, yellow. You've got to card. give them some control. Nearly all controls taken away in power from the umpires. Just about, they just stand there now and count call it, um, call it, That's all. That's, they don't yeah. really Everything do anything. Goes upstairs to umpire yeah. as well. Yeah, I don't have any problem with discussion on the field, particularly if it's about technique or whether the guy's backing himself along those lines. But when it gets personal, uh, I don't care who it is. You, you can't just have to suck it up and it, it get that personal abuse. What if the umpires abuse? can't hear the personal nature, but it's clear there's something unpleasant going on? Can they kind of investigate? And well, well, it's difficult, isn't it? Because if it's not picked up on a stump mic, if it's his word against my word, it's, it's, it's a kind of tricky emotive issue. It is. But all the umpire has to say is, OK, something took place here. I don't know what it is, but I do not like it. Cut it out. If they persist, here comes the card. Yeah. Simple mark. What about the stump mics you said? Should they be up all the time? Does that stop a lot of that stuff well, if, happening in the game at the moment? Does that you, stop any of that if you kept it up? If you're not allowed to be personal, you yeah, can't the, have but them the problem with them up. The problem with them up is we're, we're all human beings yeah, and you might I swear like under pressure. Up. You well, might just exclaim with a bad word and then it's no that's good right. for the so, kids. That's right. That's what I'm saying. I'm so, just throwing it out so. there. I think there is technology available to make them up for the third umpire and not going to air. So the third umpire could be in his room and hearing everything. It doesn't go to here. It doesn't appear. It doesn't. It isn't heard in people's living rooms. And I think if that is possible, that should be done. And then he could speak down to the on-field yep. umpires on and say, Grant, he's hearing saying everything. something to me. Are, are you happy? Did you go with the card idea? I go with the card do you idea. Go, yeah, do you go, as a general rule, are you talking zero tolerance here? Zero tolerance, Mark. Right. Okay. None, Good. No okay. sledging. I, I, the, I, I love the sarcastic idea. remarks, fine. I love my, I'm not just not sure about the whole match. I'm not sure. I'm Entire just, I'm just thinking about the, the match or, is it, or if, that innings. If, if your crime happens five minutes before the end of play and you're sent off and it's only for the day, you're running going to miss four minutes play. I'm saying for the innings. I'm just saying should it be maybe for that yeah. innings. But what happens if it's, again, it's the, you're nine down when you behave badly? No, you have a yellow card, you know. You have a yellow card. That yellow card carries over. Just like in yeah. football. The next game... Yeah. You do it again, that's a oh, red right. card. Okay, that's another interesting And you're one. gone. Okay. Well, that's yeah, card doesn't, just right. doesn't right. disappear. Right. right, we're running out of time. Um, we've seen um, the game have a very difficult week. Do we think the result of it might be a better and kinder game? Well, sometimes everything comes to a head for a reason. And when it does come to a head, there's discussion like we have in here. The RCC are talking about they're going to have investigations into how they feel the spirit of cricket should function and how the game should be controlled. So in the end, something good is probably going to come out of it. And the fact that it's come to a head means that decisions will be made and the game going forward, I think, will be a better game. I agree. I, hopefully the results here that everyone in the ICC take note, every board takes note, every country takes note and says, you know what, let's look at our own backyard. It's not just the Australians. Let's look at all our backyard. We can play better. Graham. Absolutely. I don't think there's anything more to add. I, I hope that uh, people sitting in these boxes here and teams at, at home will realise what can happen to you if you cross the boundaries. And Mikey, you agree? Totally. And we saw two teams here in this test match coming out shaking hands. We don't need the ICC and we don't need the police to, mark to control things. Oh, yes. the, two, the players can do it. I just think of the game of rugby. They had a lot of bad things that were going on and the implementation of certain things means a lot of that has been eradicated. We can do the same in our game. Who's your favourite cricketer of all time? <laughs> Sean. I'll, I'll go lost. Just go to them first. No, no. <laughs> Viv Richards. Viv, Viv Richards. I have a Viv Richards. Viv Richards for me. Malcolm Marshall, but because of what he did for me. Malcolm Marshall. <laughs> um, favorite. Oh. LG Rowe. Lawrence Rowe. Oh. Jeez, we've got to have someone out with three West Indians. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no you can't idea. say me, Smitty. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no idea. You could say your least favourite opponent of all time. 
Come on, oh, you know. No, Warnie was my favourite. Come on, come on, pick a player. Come, come on, on, your favourite cricketer of all time. You must have had a hero as a boy. You caught me off guard. Um, did you not have one of those posters up on your wall? No, 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 we couldn't afford them, Polly. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Who was yours, Mark? Yeah. Gary Sobers. Gary Sobers. So we've got four West Indians. Mercy. And then Mercy. Barry Richards. <laughs> Barry. And then Sachin. And then Warnie. I think my favourite to play in captain and against Viv. was Brian Laura. You know, you kept the Fight game West interesting. West Indians. Yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, you just, you know, you always have to be on your toes. You'd be defensive, defensive, defensive. Suddenly the whole game would change and you'd have to adapt. Excellent. Yeah. Right. So, 469, the lead at lunchtime for uh, the South Africans. A fabulous discussion that brought many of the leading issues of the game into sharp focus here at the Wanderers with our expert panel. A round of applause, please, for the guys here. What a performance. <laughs>